Uh, it's lovely to be here. Before we begin, uh, I've got a little bit of news from my life. A little while ago, I got engaged. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's very, very kind of you. Um, it's not actually the news. What I was going to say is if anyone here is thinking about getting engaged, I do have a ring I need to sell. Uh, as I'm, not, uh, as I'm not, not engaged anymore. Yeah, she's gone. So um, I, will, I will do it for a really good price because I've got to be honest, it's, it's proven a tough sell. No one seems to want to buy a second-hand engagement ring, possibly because it sounds like the sort of thing you might need as an ingredient in a curse. So back to being single, back to square one. And I find that kind of difficult, you know, because I'm not really what you call an alpha male. I've definitely slept with more women than I've had sex with. <laughs> yeah, cheers. <laughs> and I just feel like I can't move on until I get rid of it, you know. Because it's, it's like, the, like I say, it's like this cursed thing. Cause a second-hand engagement ring. It's a, it's a charged, emotionally charged object, isn't it? Because it's a physical object. But also, the very nature of it being second-hand, it's a little story as well, isn't it? It's not a whole story, but it's enough of one. It's like if a person owns a single blood-stained ski. <laughs> I drag it around everywhere, whispering to it, refusing to explain what it is. Like... You don't know exactly what has gone on in that story, but you know enough to just leave it the fuck alone, you know? <laughs> so I miss her. I miss, it's the little things you miss, isn't it? Like, I, I miss the way she would laugh and the way she would smile and the way she would always pay half of the rent. <laughs> Got a plan, though. It's a very simple plan. I'm going to find love. I'm going to find love. I'm going to kill it. Because it keeps tricking me. And to be honest, I'm a bit scared of it as well, you know. Because, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm just scared it will happen again, you know. That I'll get engaged or I'll get married and it won't work out. And I don't want to be like some sort of forlorn Sonic the Hedgehog, mindlessly running around collecting rings. <laughs> that he realistically has no practical use for. That is not how I saw my life going. I feel like I don't understand love as well, right? Because we're not educated about it, are we? We pick up our ideas about love from, from movies, really, from things like love, actually. And they give men, in particular, some weird ideas, right? We all know men that think it's a good thing to attempt to be a hopeless romantic. We know the sort of people that go, oh, my God, I'm such a hopeless romantic. I fall in love on the bus every single day, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. You mean that you stare. I mean that you stare at women and you force them to worry about whether or not you might follow them home. <laughs> it's not noble or romantic, is it? You're not Colin Firth because you're holding your Kindle rather than your penis. <laughs> it's ultimately the same effect. So you look closer to home, for an example, of love, you know, because whether we like it or not, our parents' marriages are the relationships that we base our own relationship models on. And I haven't learned a lot about love from my dad in particular. He's quite a sort of you know, proud man, doesn't talk about feelings a lot. When he does, he's drunk, and he'll say things to my mum like, you do know, if anyone ever hurt you, I'd kill them. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> I, I am amazed that the bakery will even make such an aggressive cake. There you go. It's the right thing that we broke up, though, anyway, my ex and I. Uh, we'll, we'll call her Mandy. Her name is Holly. Um, <laughs> but we'll call her Mandy because we met at a festival, and to start with, she made me feel amazing. <laughs> then after a little while, she made me feel fucking horrible. <laughs> we used to argue all the time. So we argued in the street. Any couples here that argue in the street? Oh, yeah. yeah, a couple of you being honest. So I'll make it easier for the rest of you. I admire that honesty. But a any couples here that have ever enjoyed watching another couple argue in the street? <laughs> oh, it's the fucking best, isn't it? You are never more in love with your partner than when you're watching some poor other set of bastards trying to remember what they're even arguing about just so they can take it inside. But when you're on the other side of that, people are not shy because they know that you're busy. They know you can't like, resp res re respond. So they just sort of follow you around going, yeah, give it to him. I bet he does talk down to your mum. Yeah, he seems a type. Go on. It's horrible. And if you're arguing with somebody that you love as well, it's not based on logic, is it? It's based on emotion. So quite often it makes no sense. One of the criticisms she had of me in our relationship was that I don't do enough charity work. <laughs> Anyone had that? I mean, I don't. I don't do any. I don't... I don't really do enough for the causes I care about, to be honest. I mean, I went on a gay pride march once, but that's because I used to live in Brighton. I needed milk and it was on the way. Like... <laughs> I didn't realise it was like a sort of romantic prerequisite. So people tell you that, you know, you've got, to, you've got to be positive when you go through a breakup. But actually, I think that's bad advice. You've got to go through the sad bit. You've got to mope. Because you, you just end up sat about trying to be positive. But you just end up, you know, sat in your pants, procrastinating. I, um, 